Welcome back, y'all. This is part three of our off-grid electrical series. So, so far, we have already talked about the wiring schematic. We've talked about how things are generally wired and what each of those components do for your off-grid electrical system. We've talked about how to properly size your battery bank, what types of batteries are best, and how to generally wire those batteries together. In this video, it is all things solar. So we'll talk about what types of solar panels I'd recommend, how to configure those solar panels, and how large of a solar array that you'll need to support your battery bank, as well as how large of a solar charge controller you'll need to convert that power back to your 12 volt battery bank. Stay tuned. Hi there, and welcome to Healthy Trails. I'm Steven. And I'm Jackie. And together we created Healthy Trails to bring wellness to you. We're traveling around the US in our self-converted school bus and home on wheels to meet you where you're at and help guide you along your individual wellness journey. We can't wait to explore an adventure with you as we navigate together towards a happier and healthier life. All right, so we will be Picking it up right where we left off after those last two videos. So if you missed those, go back and check on those. We'll be referencing some of that information, knowledge that we learned in those videos as well as some of the math from the last video and building on that. Uh, if you'd like another point of reference, check out the blog that is linked in the description. That'll go over all of the information from this video as well as our other videos pertaining to schoolie and van conversions as well. So at this point, now knowing the size of our battery bank in amp hours from the last video, we can use that number to start sizing out our solar array. Uh, so we'll have to take that number and our first step is to convert it back into watt hours. So we can actually use that same equation that we've been referencing a couple times now. Um, so for our particular example, we have 300 amp hours for our battery bank and we can multiply that by 12 volts, which is going to give us our 3,600 watt hours for that battery bank since we're only going to be running that down to 50%, since we have those sealed lead acid batteries, you can actually uh, multiply that by 50%, divide it by two, which will give you the 1800 watt hours of usable capacity that will need it to be recharged every single day. And now to use this number to get the rough estimate of the type of solar array that you'll need to recharge that, you can actually take that 1800 watt hours and divide it by about five hours of good sunshine as this is sort of the average in most places in the United States that you can get, um, which leaves us with about 3600 watts of solar that should allow us to fully charge that each day. And we actually ended up going with 400. It's not a bad idea to oversize just a little bit here again, as solar is relatively cheap. And with that 400 watts of solar, we can actually do a little, little bit of quick math as well to figure out um, how long that will take to charge our battery bank. So if we took that 1800 watt hours of usable battery bank that we need to recharge and divide that by 400, that's going to give us about four and a half hours to fully charge. But I should note also that this is assuming we are on the equator on the summer solstice and have 100% perfect efficiency, which is never going to be the case. So you can probably estimate that your solar panels are going to be about 70% um, effective or 70% efficient. So you can actually take that number and multiply by 0.7, that 400 times 0.7 or however many your uh, solar array is in wattage, which leaves us with 280 watts of a charging capacity that we would be using. Now taking this number, we can continue that trend using our math and taking our 1800 usable watt hours divided by 280 watts of solar, that would leave us about 6.4 hours to charge. So given the fact that we do plan on chasing the sun a little bit more, we plan on also having the alternator charging as a backup as well as shore power, I think that's gonna work perfect. So far for us, that has been plenty to keep that battery bank topped off and right around 100% all day. All right, and moving on. So now we now know how big of a battery bank we need. We know what types of batteries and we know how big of a solar array to get. We need to know what type of solar panels to get. So without getting into the weeds too much, I would go monocrystalline over polycrystalline. Uh, poly is gonna be a little bit cheaper, but for the extra efficiency, mono is gonna be worth it. So knowing this, 
there are different types of monocrystalline panels that you can also get. Um, you've got rigid panels, just your standard panels that can be anchored up to the top of your rig. You've got the flexible panels, which offer a little bit more stealth. However, caveat here, solar panels are going to be most efficient when they're kept a little bit cooler. The um, flexible panels don't allow for any airflow underneath the panels. So these are a little bit more susceptible to heating up and being a little bit less efficient. Although if you need the stealth, great option. Uh, third one that we considered was also getting the portable uh, solar panels. So then you can actually park your rig in the shade, put those out in the sun, keep everything a little bit cooler. So that's another great option as well. Um, although those are a little bit more expensive. So really just depending on your needs, you can pick one of the three, if not a combination. And that's pretty much solar panels. And in order to use the solar panels, if you remember back from video one, we talked about needing a charge controller. So in choosing the type of charge controller, there are basically two kinds. You have PMW and MPPT. Basically, I would go MPPT. It's going to be much more efficient. And for the small amount that you're saving going PMW, unless you have a really small system and you are on a very tight budget, it probably will not be worth it. So I would go MPPT. And from there, we need to know how to size it. So this requires using our equation once again. So with our particular example, you can fill in your own numbers. We have a 400 watt solar array we can actually divide that number by the battery bank voltage which is 12 and that will give us 33.33 amps and this will be how large of a charge controller that we need not a bad idea to size up here um, especially if you're considering potentially expanding in the future so we went with a 40 amp charge controller now not only does our charge controller have an amperage max in our case 40 but it also is going to have a voltage max. So this is something that you need to be aware of as well. And the way that you're gonna know the voltage coming into your system from your solar panels is again by doing a little bit of math. So we remember back now to how we wired our battery bank. If you wired them in parallel, the voltage stays the same and the amperage goes up. And if you wired them in series, the voltage goes up and the amperage stays the same. So you'll have to look up on your solar panels what the voltage and amperage is and do a little bit of that quick math to figure out what you've got coming into your charge controller. So for our example, we wired our four 100 watt solar panels in series. So again, that is the positive lead of one panel into the negative of the next and so on. So each panel has an amperage of 6.26 amps and the voltage of each panel is going to be 16.77 volts. So in series, we know that this brings the total voltage coming into our charge controller to 67.08, and the amperage is going to stay the same at 6.26. Now, had we wired these solar panels in parallel, then the total voltage would have stayed the same at 16.77, and the amperage would have been raised to 25.04. Our charge controller, again has an amperage max of 40. It also has an input voltage max of 100 volts. So in either case, we would have been fine here. However, by wiring them in series and increasing the voltage, this may actually help us a bit on overcast days or around sunset or sunrise, since charge controllers also have a minimum voltage needed to be able to perform as well. So by having larger voltage coming in, in general, we're able to perform a little bit better in those low light situations. In addition, by keeping the voltage a little bit higher, you are thus going to be decreasing the amperage and you can get away with using a little bit lower gauge wires as well. We'll talk about that a little bit more in video four, our final video of this electrical series. Um, but smaller gauge wire usually means cheaper as well. So you can save a little bit of money there. You also will not need branch connectors or combiner boxes when wiring in series compared to parallel. So that's a little bit of a cost savings as well. Now, there are still some situations when parallel wiring for your solar array is going to be much more beneficial. Uh, for one, it'll be largely dictated by your charge controller. So if you have a PMW charge controller, there's a good chance that your voltage max is going to be significantly less than that of an MPPT. Uh, and you might have to wire those in parallel just to match that charge controller requirement to be able to accept that charge. The other 
we haven't really gotten into a whole lot is uh, partial shading. So I'll try to keep this as simple as possible. Basically, um, your solar panels, when wired in series, will perform at the level of the lowest cell. So if half of your solar array is being shaded, the rest of your solar panels are also going to be underperforming to match that level. When you are wiring in parallel, you kind of can avoid this problem. All right, y'all. So I think I'm going to leave it here for today and we will finish up everything else that you need to know to finish designing and setting up your off-grid electrical system in the next video. As a recap, up until this point, after this video and the previous two, we should now know what each of the electrical components are, what they do, how to size, wire, and choose the right batteries for your battery bank, as well as how to size, wire, and choose the right solar panels for your solar array, and how to size that charge controller that you'll need to accept the power from those panels as well. And in our final video, we will be going over uh, basically everything else again, talking about sizing your inverter, the 12 volt wiring, fuses, breakers, as well as all of that AC wiring, uh, outlets and such. So look out for that video in the future. Uh, again, you can check on the Schoolie Resources playlist back on our channel homepage. Uh, and you can check out that blog that is linked in the video description for a more detailed look at all of our other Schoolie related videos that we've both posted in the past, as well as we'll hopefully continue to post in the future. And again, disclaimer, I am not an electrician, so please, please consult with the professionals before you start doing any of the wiring on your conversion. Um, take my advice with a grain of salt and best of luck on the builds, guys. That about does it for me. I'll see you on the next one.